March 31st, 2023. For most of my life, even before Twister was a movie, I wanted to see a tornado in real life. Right now, my 2016 Ford Escape is about to earn its name. Before this day is over, I will receive seven tornado warnings on my phone, two severe storm warnings of winds up to 90 miles per hour, and a flash flood warning. I'll have traveled for two straight hours, fleeing various storms, run across the same F4 tornado twice, ruin a windshield, and learn a ton about storm chasing. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before March 31st, the closest I've ever come to seeing a tornado in person was an EF0 tornado that formed in front of me, but it was so rain-wrapped that I didn't even know it was there. It's almost a full week before the March 31st tornado outbreak, and legendary storm chaser Reed Timmer warns of what might be the day to chase. As the day nears, every instinct in my body tells me that I have to do it. I tell my friends that I'm going to Washington, Iowa, more than 200 miles away, to chase. I'm in Washington, Iowa right now. Why Washington City? The southeast corner of Iowa is one of two areas that the Storm Prediction Center have rated as a high probability of producing a tornado. I'm placing myself on the leading edge of that zone, but in a town that's small enough that I can leave it quickly when I need to. This should be an interesting storm to chase. I'm expecting... Um, Possibly a couple supercells near the area that I'm at. In a briefing the night before, Reed Timmer has one last piece of advice for newer storm chasers. Don't get in front of the storms, he warns. They are fast moving and you won't be able to multitask. This is known as foreshadowing. Most bow-shaped storms travel in a northeast direction. My plan is to travel west on 92 and then travel back east. In theory, just by traveling east on 92, I'll be able to pick and choose which storm I chase as they travel northeast. I arrive in Washington at 11 a.m., eat, fill up with gas, wax all my windows, and grab a short nap. 1.04 p.m., things look great. 1.31 p.m., storms are developing to my east. I have to ignore them to stay on my target, but I start to travel west. Now I make my first mistake. I headed north somehow and ended up in Kelowna, Iowa. I head southwest through dirt roads and end up back on 92. It takes me a while, but I get there. As I travel on 92, I'm seeing more and more storm chasers. I stop to talk to a guy in a red sports car. We both know that there's a circulation in Hendrix that could be a tornado. My new friend tells me that it's going to be one and done, meaning there won't be a chance to chase it once it's here. I head further west until I start to get hit by hail. It's 3.57 and I'm at Clear Creek in 92. I'm about to make my second mistake. Whatever is headed towards me is rain wrapped and I don't want any part of it, so I head back east and north. That means instead of getting in the path of one of the storms, I'm about to get in the path of all the storms. I pass Kyoto going north on 77. Say that I'm being chased. Come on, man. Come on. The blinking circle on the radar is me. If you'll notice, there are several radar indicated tornadoes near me. That doesn't mean it's an actual tornado, it means it's radar indicated. I'm having trouble getting my GPS to work right now because I was trying to go YouTube live while using radar scope at the same time. It won't work. Come on. Normally I would edit this part out, but I believe that part of storm chasing is record keeping. And in this case, this is going to turn into an EF4 tornado. I want you to see the beginning stages, all the way from the beginning. Not just what I think is important, because let's face it, I'm not a professional. If you're not interested in seeing it form, just skip two minutes ahead. There were 131 confirmed tornadoes this day. It may be the fifth largest tornado outbreak in 24 hours of all time. This was a long track EF4 tornado. 
According to NWS Quad Cities, they coordinated with the NWS Quick Response Survey Team and rated the tornado a low-end EF4 with maximum winds around 170 miles per hour. There were at least three injuries with no known fatalities. The tornado developed northeast of Watumwa in Wapalo County Friday afternoon, then tracked northeast over 40 miles through Keokuk and Washington counties before lifting in southwest Johnson County. The tornado was on the ground for about 67 minutes. The maximum width of the tornado was about 600 yards. The tornado destroyed numerous homes, farm buildings, farm equipment, and vehicles, and caused extensive tree damage. A farmstead north of Kyoto in Keokuk County had the most extreme damage rated at EF4, with a house swept clean off its foundation. Near Kyoto, a second weaker tornado occurred as the violent tornado was ongoing just to the north. This weaker tornado also caused some farmstead damage. like real hail. This is the worst camera work that I've ever done in my life, and it's about to get even worse. In a second, you'll hear me say that I want to get closer. This is extremely dumb because I'm in the exact right place to see the tornado. I have to see it. Get closer. I'm now headed back towards Kyoto. As I drive in that direction, I suddenly realize I'm making a really dumb mistake. This tornado is doubling in size every couple of minutes. Not only that, there seems to be a second funnel forming on the left. That's not including what I believe to be the original rain-wrapped tornado behind it. Come on, man. Let's do this right. Let's haul ass. As the tornado grows, my camera work will get worse. Part of that is because I'm trying to keep an eye on the radar, part of it is because I'm trying to escape, and part of it is because I'm just freaking out. Up until this point, I always wondered why it was that people had such bad camera work while filming tornadoes. Now I know why. They're freaking out.
I had never seen a tornado before. And now I'm not only seeing what turns out to be an EF4 tornado, but it's an EF4 tornado headed straight towards me. As I'm headed north, let me give you a few more details. This is about the time when I feel like the storm is starting to overtake me. You'll notice that the clouds are getting darker in the sky and that the clouds are moving faster than I am. I can tell you for a fact that this storm was moving at least 60 miles per hour. I see that the tornado has crossed the road behind me. I stop just long enough so that I can get my camera out and try to point it in the direction of the storm. But I realize this is a dumbass mistake. The next few minutes are just me fleeing, so I'm going to fast forward to where I hit the T intersection. Hail starts to hit my window, and now I'm worried about something new, which is, if I can't see through my windshield, how am I going to avoid this? What T intersection? Yeah, I run into a T intersection. Now I have the choice of either going left and run into the tornado that's the rain wrap tornado, or go right and run into what I now know to be an EF4 tornado. While I'm going through Wellman, I see a place called Casual Cafe. There are a few people standing outside, looking at the clouds. I try to yell a warning at them. Watch out guys, it's a big one! It's 
coming towards us and it's big, guys. You saw the small one. There's a bigger one behind it. Run, run, run! For the next hour and a half, I'll run into one storm after another. A few of the tornadoes that landed north of my path seem to have done so right about the time that I was in the area. While I'm playing some of the footage that I took while heading east to the Quad Cities, I wanted to go over some of the lessons that I learned about storm chasing. If you like them, or if you just want to help me pay for my windshield, push the thanks button and drop me a couple of bucks, please? Don't chase a tornado from in front of it especially when it's a fast-moving tornado. Don't shoot video with a wide-angle lens. It's all psychological. If you feel like the tornado is closer, you'll feel more of the immediacy and the desire to get out of the way. Make sure your autofocus isn't set to focus on faces like mine was. Sync the time on all your cameras. It'll save you time in the editing process later. Trust me on this. Don't try to run any other program on any cell phone that is running a radar program like RadarScope. Your GPS location in relation to the storm is too important. If you can afford it, attach a high-res dash cam that looks backwards, especially if your rear window is not tinted like mine is. If a tornado is behind you, it's bad news, but you probably want video of it later on to remember it by. Listen to your instincts, all of them. When a tornado grows, I would love for you to say the words El Reno to yourself, like I did. It's a reminder that a tornado can grow and catch even the most seasoned storm chasers off guard. Chase with someone else. I tried to find someone to chase with, but it really does help if you have someone else covering the work while you drive. I'll leave you with this video of me entering the Quad Cities and seeing another storm. I sheltered in a shell station for about 10 minutes. That wasn't the end of the storms, but it's the end of this chapter of this story. I hope you learned something from my mistakes. Chase safer.